Hey, what's up nerds and welcome back to the channel. This is Shoot Move Edit, I'm Jeff, and in this video I'm gonna show you guys how to use the Olympus Pen EE3. It's a small, easy to use point and shoot camera, it uses 35 millimeter film, however, it shoots in half frame. So if you shoot 36 frame roll, you actually get 72 shots. Before we get started, the main reason why I got the camera, at least one of the reasons why I got it, is because back in the day, its older brother, the EE, so like the first one, was actually used by US Special Operations Forces during the Vietnam War. All right, let's get to the camera. First thing we're gonna go over is the outside of the camera and all of its parts. So we're gonna start with the top. Right here, you got your rewinding crank, you got your flash shoe, the model nomenclature, get your shutter release button, and your frame or shutter counter right here. Next goes to the sides. Nothing on either size, just strap rings on both sides. As you can tell, you got a strap right here already. Move to the bottom real quick. You got the back cover release tripod socket, and your rewind release button. Try to say that five times fast, good lord. Then off to the back, not much here. Got your viewfinder and your film advance wheel. On the front, you got your sync socket, the lens itself. This outer ring of the lens right here is the selenium meter. That's how the metering and everything works. Front of the viewfinder, and then your center dot and then around the lens the lens barrel you can see all the settings for asa aperture and for uh, flash distance so when it comes to powering the camera there is no actual on off switch nor does this camera actually require batteries or any external power all the power it needs for its metering and its automatic adjustments all go through the selenium meter here in the front of the camera So now let's get into loading this bad boy. Before we start loading, go ahead and switch the lens barrel to an aperture setting or f-stop number. So if we're up on f.5.6. Reason for this, once we start advancing the film to tighten it on the back, this way the camera will release a shutter regardless of the amount of light. All right, so let's go to the bottom, pull up on release there we go open up the back that's what it looks like inside so now let's go ahead and grab our film so for this one i'll be using this kodak 400 film i think it's like the kodak max color or something i picked it up at walmart or walgreens so i'm gonna get the film lead inserted into this lead sprocket here hold it down pull the film across let's go ahead and open up Rewinding crank, pull it up, drop it in. Once it's inside, push down the rewinding crank. So now it's set. So now let's go ahead and advance the film. Okay, that's shot. And we're gonna advance the film until it is tight on the back. So I'll give it one or two. There we go. So now we can go and close at the back. And now we are going to Advance the film until the shutter count is at oh. there we go. Is at one. So we're using Kodak 400 film, so now I'm gonna rotate the lens barrel until the ASA setting ISO this film is at 400. So now any of the adjustments the camera is gonna make is based off of that number of 400. The two different modes you can use on the Olympus Pen E3. The first one is automatic and the second one is manual. So automatic. You set the cameras to automatic. You just need to rotate the lens barrel to the 
corresponding ASA number. So for the Kodak film we're using, it's gonna be set at 400. And now the camera will make any automatic adjustments to the aperture and the shutter speed according to the amount of light coming to the camera. When shooting with the Olympus Pen E3, it will shoot at two different shutter speeds. It'll shoot at one two hundredth of a second for lighter conditions, and then down to one fourth of a second for darker conditions. So whenever you're shooting in automatic mode and there is not enough light, so I'm gonna place my hand in front of the meter. So when there's not enough light coming through the camera to get a proper exposure, a small little flat, little red flag will pop up indicating not enough light for proper exposure. And if that is the case, the shutter will not release. And so for manual mode, go to the lens barrel and then rotate it to the aperture needed. Now at this point, because you're in full manual, you will need to make all your calculations for exposure, such as like on your phone or if you have another app and do all that yourself to get the proper exposure. So if we're on 5.6, and when you're shooting on manual mode, this camera will always shoot at 1 40th of a second. So your ISO will fit be fixed according to the film you're using. Shutter will always be at 1 40th of a second. So really the only major adjustment that you can make on the fly is your aperture. And when your camera is in manual mode set to one of these apertures, it will release the shutter regardless of the amount of light. So right now my camera is pointing at a small LED panel. So there is a plenty of light, so it will release. So I just released the shutter. So now I'm gonna completely cover it up and then you'll notice it's still released. All right, so as you look through the viewfinder, there is not much there. Whatever's inside that white rectangle is what is going to be in your frame. And if you're looking for any type of focus assisting mechanism, there is none. These, this lens on this camera is preset and fixed from 1.5 meters to infinity. So anything from 1.5 meters out will be in focus. And if you're trying to do close up shots, well then um, good luck with that. And like I said before, if you're trying to shoot in automatic mode, and there's not enough light. There's their little red flag indicating, hey, not enough light. So now you're done shooting all your film, but a quick note before we unload, I'm gonna make a note. When you are done shooting, you're done when you hit double your roll of film on the counter and no more. So the Kodak roll that I had on here had 24 exposures, <clears throat> excuse me, meaning I need to stop at 40 Eight. Once I'm done with that, I gotta unload the camera. Go to the bottom of the camera and press the rewind release button. Now on this particular camera, I do have to hold it down while I'm rewinding because if I let go, it'll lock up the sprocket again. So go ahead and hold that down, come up to the rewinding crank, open that up, and then begin rolling your film. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll the film until the roll and the rewinding crank spins, spins freely. Let go, let go of the rewinding release button. And now let's open up the back. And if you do everything right, meaning you rewound it till it went freely, all of your film should be back up into the canister. Get it out. Pull up on the rewinding crank. And there's your film. For the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and close this bad boy back up. So push on the back and make sure that catch is all the way back up. So whether you inherited the camera, whether you got it at a thrift store, or maybe you're like me and got it off of eBay, my hope is that you guys are now able to use your Olympus Pen EE3 to go out and take photos. And if you guys need a little bit more tips on photography, you can go ahead and check out these two videos right here. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.